Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to present exercises on difference of sets. It is important for you to know that this is a three part video, of which this is the first part. In each part, there are going to be presented five videos. So, in total, there are going to be 15 exercises that are going to be presented. Right now, you can see the exercises that are going to be presented in part one. Now you can see the exercises that are going to be presented in part two. And you can see now the exercises that are going to be presented in part three. For each of the 15 exercises, uh, feel free to try each of them on your own if you want to. Uh, also, at each moment, you can pause the video at the moment as at which I say that I'm going to present a certain approach for solving the solution. Uh, feel free to comment down below or share your solution in the comments. So uh, let's get started. The first exercise says let A and B be sets, then the set A without B is containing A. As I said at the beginning, if you want to try this exercise on your own, uh, feel free to try it. You can pause the video right now or you can continue watching a certain approach for solving the video. So this exercise has a conclusion of a containment. So in this case, we can use the magic word of, or the magic phrase, let S in the set A without B. And so then by the definition of difference of sets, and we have that S is in A and S is not in B. This is just the definition of difference of sets. So just by simplifying the conjunction that we have, then S is in A. This would be an argument that starts with S in A without B and ends with S in A. This is an argument that gives a containment, that containment being that A without B is containing A. This would be it for the first exercise. This was a quick. Okay, and now we can move on to exercise number two. It says that A and B be sets, then the set A without the intersection of A and B is equal to the set A without B. If you want, give it a try. And feel free to pause the video. Also, you can share your solution or comments on below. Uh, now, starting with the proof, uh, in this case, uh, the conclusion is an equality, so it is going to be proven by equivalences. So, starting S is in A without the intersection of A and B. This is if and only if S is in A and S is not in A intersection B. This is the definition of difference of set. Now, for the definition of not in, that's the negation of belonging. So, S is in A and not S in A intersection B. There is uh, not much notation that can do better for this part. <laughs> so, right now, um, using the definition of intersection, it is if and only if S is in A and not S in A and S in B. So now in order to continue, uh, it is important to use the negation of a conjunction. And for that, uh, we are going to negate each of the terms, S not in A, and we are going to change the connector. Instead of AND, we get an OR. And as I said, we negate the, the terms. So now we have S not in B also. This is the negation of a conjunction. Also, this is one of the, the more than those. And in this case, we have a conjunction of which one of the terms is a disjunction. So we can distribute the conjunction. And we just do that. And so we get S is in A and S is not in A, or S is in A and S is not in B. As the pattern tells, 
S in A is the first term in each of the conjunctions, which was the first term of the conjunction of which we start. So now it's important to notice that the first term of the disjunction is a logical contradiction. It pretty much says S is in A and S is not in A. When is the negation of the other one? This is always false. So this is impossible. And fortunately, we have that this is a disjunction. So we only need either of the terms to be true, but one is, uh, is necessarily false, so the other one needs to be true. Uh, pretty much this implies that S is in A and S is not in B, the, the term of which we remain. This is called the modus tollendo components, just for you to know. And okay, now we can go back uh, because we want an equivalence and just by disjunction introduction. We can always add terms in disjunction. So, okay, this gives us the implication back. So this was an equivalence. And so we have an argument connected by equivalences, which would prove an equality. Well, before that, we have the definition of difference of them. So S is in A without B. And as I was saying, uh, right now we have just a argument connected by equivalences from A minus A without A intersection B and A without B. So they are it. This would be it for exercise number two. So moving on to exercise number three. So let A, B, and X be sets. If A is containing B, then X without B is containing X without A. If you want, give it a try or feel free to continue watching. So, okay, in this case, uh, it is an implication of the conclusion being a containment. So we uh, are free to suppose that A is containing B. But before that, uh, we are going to start with the containment. So let's have the definition of the containment of a set. In this case, for A containing B, we have that for all S in A implies S in B. And moreover, uh, it is going to be helpful for the proof to have, to, to have uh, because we are going to use the contraposition law. And in this case, uh, we have that for all S, S in A implies that S is in B. And this is equivalent. This is if and only if. For all S, S is not in B implies S is not in A. This is just the contraposition law. So also, if you want to pause at this moment because there are more ideas that you can take from, uh, also try the exercise from this point. Uh, regardless, uh, uh, we can continue, okay, we have that a is containing B, that's our supposition. So right now we want to prove the containment of X without B is containing X without A. So our magic word for proving containments, let S in X without B. So just definition of difference of sets, then S is in X and S is not in B. And nevertheless, from the contraposition law and our supposition, S is in A implies S is in B. This is if and only if S is not in B implies it's not in A. So by contraposition law, then S is not in A. And moreover, using a couple of times modus ponens, which strictly speaking, it is used several times across all of these implications and equivalences and we have then s is in x and s is not in a and now again we can use the definition of difference so s is not in s is in x uh, without a and at this moment uh, we've got an argument that starts with s in x without b and ends with x in without a 
So this is an argument that proves a containment, that containment being that x without b is contained in x without a. And this would be the end of the proof for exercise number three. So, okay, moving on to exercise number four. Let a, b, and x be sets. And it is needed to prove that x without a union b is equal to the intersection of x without a and x without b. So, okay, uh, if you want to, uh, give it a try. Or also you are free to continue with the video. Okay, this is an equality of sets, so we are going to prove it by equivalences. So starting S is in X without A union B. The first step is just to give the definition of the difference, that being that this is if and only if S is in X and S is not in A union B. So now, because it is a little bit troublesome to work with the not in, uh, we just use the definition of not in, which is if and only if S in X and not S in A union B. And now we use the definition of union that gives that S is in X and not S in A or S in B. And at this point, we are going to do something very similar to the negation of the conjunction. In this case, we have the negation of a disjunction. So, okay, we have S in X. And again, in this case, we just negate the terms and change the connector. That's some of the many things by which are and are pretty analogous. So we get S is not in A and S is not in B. Uh, this is the other law of Morgan, the negation of the disjunction. At this moment, we have uh, three terms that are connected by ANDs, so we can use the associativity of, of ANDs. Uh, however, in this case, we are first going to use the introduction of conjunction. Uh, because we know that S is in X, uh, it is true that S is in X and F is in X. So pretty much uh, that is allowed and it's equivalent. And now we are going to use the associativity. Uh, however, uh, this is going to have a couple of steps because uh, just going really in depth into the details of associativity and commutativity because why not do all the steps? Why not? So, okay, just setting this aside, uh, we are having the term which we have at the last time, uh, that being that S is in X and S is in X, and S is not in A and S is not in B. So, just showing all the steps that would be needed if we do not have the nice properties of, of general associativity and general commutativity. But okay, we go for associativity in the first case, associativity of conjunction. So just using the last term, this gives us that S is in X. And uh, we just joined the second S in X with the last term, this third term, keeping the parentheses, that's important. So at this moment, uh, we have three terms in the second term, so we can use associativity again. So this gives us that S is in X, and uh, moving the parentheses to the first two terms, S is in X, and S is not in A, and S is not in B, but that subset of the operator. And now something just to do the least amount of steps we can commute the terms that are in the inner parentheses. So we use commutativity of conjunction. So we have S is in X, and now in the inner parentheses, S is not in A and S is in X. And everything is pretty much the same. And now we just break out everything, just going back these steps. So now we use associativity again. 
A is not in A, and S is in X, and F is not in B. And we just break everything as we just start. Okay, it was a little bit troublesome, a lot of steps, I know, but in this case, we just exchange the second term and the third term, which pretty much was what we needed. Yeah, this is what we needed. So we go back to the to the process that we were having. So from the former steps, now it is claimed that we can exchange the second and the third term, which is what we have already here. So S is in X and S is not in A, and S is in X and S is not in B. And just dragging the definitions of difference, we have that S is in X without A, and S is in X without B, and also we have the definition of intersection. So S is in the intersection of X without A, and X without B. And all of these steps are connected by equivalences. Some of them are not showing in here because there were a lot of steps just to exchange the second and the third term. But yeah, we have an argument connected by equivalences, so the starting and the last sets are equal. A little bit refreshing that we finish exercise four. But we go for exercise number five, the last of this video. So let A and B and X be sets. And now the X without A intersection B is going to be equal to X without A union X without B. And if you want, give it a try. Right now, I continue with the proof. And the proof is going to be for an equality of sets. So again, it is going to be by the equivalence. So let S in X without A intersection B. And this is equivalent to S in X and S is not in A intersection B. This is the definition of difference of sets. And again, we want to take out the, the not in, just writing it explicit. The definition of not in is S in X and not S in A intersection B. So we just take that. And now just as in the previous case, we are going to replace the definition of intersection. And also we are going to use the, the modal law. Okay. This one was the first example. So pretty much S is not in A or S is not in B, uh, negation of conjunction. And in this case, we can distribute the AND over the OR. Okay. And pretty much at this point, we are finishing because right now we can just use the definition of difference again. So we have S is in X without A or S is in X without B. And also we have the definition of unit. So we right now have two sets that are connected by equivalences, so they are. And this would be it for the first part of the video. Uh, let me know if you like the video. You can leave me questions and comments. Uh, also, if you want me to treat a certain topic in which you are interested, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching.